Welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. This week it's going to be more like Black Gumbo Northern Gardening. And my garden's going to die, most likely. Let's talk about how a freeze affects your plants and your trees. If you take a look at my garden, I've got brassicas and like these uh, broccolis, or these are cauliflowers. I've got some carrots over here. Carrots generally do well for me through the winter. I've had carrots under snow. I've got some real tender lettuce right here. Some herbs. Got some leeks and some cabbages. Various kind of brassicas. These are all cold hardy plants. But there's a problem. So we've got an epic freeze coming similar to the one we had almost two years ago that knocked my fruit trees back quite a bit. Almost killed that one right there. And Well, we've got another one coming. Most of this is going to die. And the reason it's going to die has to do with science and my inability to come out here and protect these because I don't have any row covers. I don't have any, any uh, cloth to put over these. Um, you know, my cloth got used up and got holes in it. But that's okay, you know, we'll see how they do and we'll learn from it and yeah, big freeze coming. This coming Thursday, there is an Arctic front, a uh, big blast of Arctic air that's going to blow through here. Many of you are already experiencing that cold right now in more northern parts of the country. But the forecast has dropping us down to 20, maybe 18 degrees and it's going to stay below freezing for extended period of time. So we'll have three days of pretty bad freezing weather. And I don't care where you live in this country, um, 20 degrees is cold. Um, and the problem with my garden is that it has not been very cold. In fact, it's been unusually warm. Currently, we do have, um, it's cool. It's in the 40s and, um, you know, the plants can take that, they thrive. But the problem is the plants have not had time to gradually acclimate themselves to this weather and because of that they're probably not going to do well through this this cold snap even though these are cold hardy plants so let's talk about plants and how they function this tender leaf of lettuce is held upright by the water in the cells and think of a cell as in a plant it has a cell wall and there's pressure inside those cells and that's called turgor pressure and turgor pressure causes these cells to be um, stiff. Think about these cells as perhaps uh, water-filled bricks and they, the plant is built with these bricks. And the beauty of this pressure is that the plant can adjust the pressure in these cells in order to move its leaves one way or another. And you've seen how sunflowers, they turn, they face the sun. You've perhaps seen how some plants can turn their leaves to face the sun. Uh, these little solar panels are controlled by turgor pressure. But the problem is there's water in those cells, it's under pressure, and when, I, when water freezes, it expands. Think about a soda can. If you put a soda can, which is mostly filled with water, you put that in the freezer, it, you see how it expands, and sometimes, boom, they burst. Well, that's what happens when a freeze comes, is these cells in the plant leaves, they can burst. The water expands and the cells burst, and that's why you get wilty, um, dead plants. The plant can't survive unless the cells remain intact. But it's not adjusting that pressure so much that causes a plant to be cold hardy. The cells in the plant, um, as the seasons begin to change, as daylight starts to, to get shorter and as the cool temperatures come on the plant, these are cues for the plant to begin changing and going into uh, kind of winter mode, I guess you could call it. With trees, they call it um, paradormancy. Um, they begin to pump water from their cells, especially in woody plants. They begin to, to pump water from the cells into the space between the cells, that intracellular space. And that keeps the water in the plant, and, um, but the, it reduces the, the volume of the water in the cells by a little bit. Not significantly much, but it's enough where if a freeze happens, there's space for that cell to expand. But also, taking that water out of the cell leaves behind uh, soluble solids, of the other stuff that's in that cell besides water. And that's a soluble solid. 
and solids don't expand when they freeze. And so by lowering the volume of the water in the cell and um, increasing the concentration of those soluble solids inside the cell, that actually lowers the freezing point of the cell. And that's what causes the plants that are cold hardy to be able to ride out uh, a blistering cold front and really low temperatures. Here's the problem though. That has to come on gradually. The plant has to take up the cues from the weather and the environmental conditions and begin that process gradually. And well, my plants haven't had that opportunity. It's been unseasonably warm and so they haven't had a chance to acclimate themselves to really cold weather. And that's why I believe that most of my cold hardy brassicas out here and vegetables in my garden beds, they're going to die. They're not going to make it. This cold front's going to come and slap them. We're going to have 40 mile an hour winds. There's going to be no moisture associated with this Arctic blast. See, if we had moisture, maybe we could get some snow. Like, uh, like in my last uh, big frost we had, that last big frozen, uh, frozen event, we had some snow that covered my garden, and that snow insulated my plants from the colder temperatures outside of the, you know, on the top side of the snow. And a lot of my plants survived. A lot of them didn't, but a lot of them did. This is going to be a dry one, and so I don't know that there's going to be any insulation on these plants whatsoever. Um, I have heard that people will come out and spray their plants so that it'll form an ice barrier, but uh, no, I'm not going to do that. Too, too cold, man, to be messing with water. Uh, this process of becoming cold hardy is also associated with dormancy in trees. Uh, citrus trees don't really go dormant, uh, but they do prepare for cold weather by doing that process of, you know, going into paradormancy, and it begins out here on the 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 limbs and works its way down toward the middle of the tree, and so uh, if I want to save this tree, I don't necessarily have to cover the whole thing like I tried to last time. Uh, we lost power, and the heat source that was down here didn't do any good. Uh, that cover froze over and formed a shield of ice, which I believe saved this tree. Uh, but the tree did die back all the way down to the main trunk, and uh, the roots were fine underground, the main trunk was fine, and this, this is two years of growth since that last freeze. And this tree is still confused. It's got l ripe lemons on it, it's got young lemons on it, and it's blossoming again. This tree's in for a shock. But because that process begins out here and goes toward the trunk, um, oftentimes when a big blast comes like this, the trunk and the roots down there have not gone through that process of uh, hardening off their cells to handle a freeze. And so what I'm going to do to protect this tree, I don't have enough blankets anymore to, to wrap it up, but I am going to wrap the trunk. I'm going to wrap the trunk where I can get to it, hopefully insulate that trunk a little bit so that if this Lucy the lemon tree gets knocked back like she did two years ago, well, she, she ought to come back from the trunk like she, she did last time. Um, I love this tree. I'd like to save it. That's a problem with having citrus trees in the ground here. Man, these cold snaps really knock them back. Now these apple trees, on the other hand, this cold snap won't really affect them too much, I don't think. But I do have, the, these apple trees aren't anywhere near dormancy. They haven't dropped their leaves. They're supposed to in other climates. Around here, uh, sometimes apple trees will keep their leaves year round. These are apple trees that are specifically selected for our tropical area, our subtropical weather. They do well in, uh, in, in hot environments. And uh, well, that means that they haven't dropped their leaves and that tells me that they haven't begun that process of really adjusting themselves for, uh, for, for cold weather. What you can do to induce that is to strip the leaves, but generally um, the advice is that you strip the leaves more in January. Um, it's middle of December and well, I'm not going to strip these leaves. What I might do is, again, with these apple trees, I might wrap the base of them so that if they get some damage in the upper wood, that at least my rootstock down there and my scion wood above the rootstock, I can preserve some of that and keep these apple trees alive. I actually think these apple trees might benefit from a cold snap. It might induce them to uh, wake up and get with winterization. There's not much winter left around here. But uh, yeah, I don't think the apple trees are going to have much trouble. All of my fig trees have gone through this kind of freeze before. And some of them got stunted, severely stunted. They didn't know what to do. 
that coming spring. But I tell you what, all of them lived except one. We had 17 degrees out here on these fig trees, and we had many, many hours below freezing, uh, many days below freezing. And I thought all these fig trees were goner. Uh, you know, they were, I thought they were goners. The important thing about my trees is the citrus trees are the priority, and we will be taking those in, the ones that are in pots here, and so they'll come through it just fine. Uh, we don't have to worry about those. I'll also be taking this southern cherry, this Barbados cherry tree, we'll be taking this in because it cannot handle a freeze, and that's the benefit of having some of these in containers. But the fig trees, yeah, we're just going to leave them out here to ride out this storm just like they did last year. These fig trees are so confused, they drop their leaves, but because it's so unseasonably warm, you can see some of them have put on more leaves, and some of them are fruiting. So, yeah, they don't know what to do. This guy is asleep. That's good. This uh, tree is looking healthy. We'll take him in. I mean, fig trees with fruit on them in the middle of December. Yeah, they're confused. Miss Phoebe Dog. How you doing, Phoebe? How you doing, you big fat loaf? Phoebe likes this cool weather. She likes to just come out and lay in the yard like that. But she's not going to like that 18 degree blast. Phoebe and I rode out our last storm together while my family was with my in-laws because they had power through the whole thing, but we lost power. and We were out, I guess, uh, several days without power. And yeah, it was cold. <laughs> it's cold in the house, but Phoebe and I kept the fireplace going and we had us a nice time, didn't we? But she didn't like to go out in that snow. One piece of advice that I've heard about leeks is you can hill up dirt or mulch, grass or leaves around the base of these and help protect them. But man, leeks are cold hardy down to way below it's what it's going to be here. So I'm just going to do an experiment. I'm going to leave my garden just as it is in terms of all the plants out there. And we'll see what happens. What's the worst that can happen? Well, we can lose everything. What's the best outcome? Some of it survives. What I'm going to do is harvest some of this stuff. That, that cabbage right there, those leaves are big enough to harvest and eat. So we might harvest some of this stuff, and uh, that will be good. I can harvest this pak choy right here. It's ready to eat. My turnips down here, well, they're not even close to being ready. But we can harvest some of it. We're going to harvest the lemons off of Lucy. You want to get all your ripe citrus off before a freeze or it's, it, you, you're not going to get nothing. So, uh, yeah, we're going to do the experiment and see what happens and come back and look at the aftermath. Hopefully, some of this stuff will handle the freeze. These muscadines will do fine. They'll take a freeze like champs. These are going into their sixth year, I think. The trunks are about an inch and a half tall, nice and barky. The bark's kind of fallen off on some of these. I don't know if that's regular, if that's normal. But yeah, these got zapped in that last freeze and popped right back like nothing ever happened. So we've got to trim these up this fall. At least I know that these are probably going to do just fine. And we'll continue to get our 40 pounds of fruit, 50 pounds of fruit a year. From these vines. Well, it's been nice knowing you plants. <laughs> I think you apple trees do fine. Wow, we got a lot of stuff out here. This place, this garden brings me such joy. And I just recently cut the grass and it looks good out here. Everything's doing great. Yeah, but that's temporary and well, that's gardening. Man, what a beautiful day. I expect my rosemary to, to make it. Rosemary seems to weather the weather quite nicely. Um, these, so, these softer, more uh, herbaceous herbs, these less woody herbs, I think they're going to be gone. So we can harvest some of this and take it in and preserve it and dry it. And this is marjoram. I don't use a lot of marjoram. My thyme down here already gave up the ghost and is dead. But uh, yeah, I think the rosemary will do fine. The ginger will probably get knocked back, but the root down in the ground will be fine. We'll leave it there. It'll send up more shoots. 
The destruction in a garden is natural. Plants die. Roots down below oftentimes survive, and you'll be surprised at what will grow back. Um, especially if the season is as it's predicted. After this cold snap, we're going to be back up in the 70s, at least for a while. Uh, there is a hint that we'll have another Arctic blast around New Year, first part of January. Hey, that's gardening. You know, I say on my channel, Black Gumbo Southern Gardening, we can garden year-round. Well, we can garden year-round. Most times it works. Sometimes you get a setback like this. And, uh, well, it looks like we're going to have a setback. But catastrophe is something you have to deal with in your garden, whether you live in the south or the north. It doesn't matter. There's always going to be something to come along. Pestilence, drought, disease over rain, you know, storms, uh, freezes, it's all, all going to come around and visit your garden, at least at some point. We've got to be ready for it. You've got to just have the right attitude. You can grow plants again. You can put new plants in the ground. You can plant seeds. Some of your plants might survive. We might have enough time to put new crops in before I need my beds for spring. Who knows? We'll find out. And if you want to find out what happens to this garden and uh, whether it dies or not, Subscribe to my channel, like our videos, hit the bell notification, and uh, we'd like to have you along. Hey, thanks for joining me today on Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Just a little bit of an update and some science about how plants work and why they're not working here. It's been too warm. Hey, happy gardening to you. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.